Here we have a new 2024 Cadillac CT5 V Series. This comes in Summit White. And then we have Jet Black with Jet Black accented leather red interior. And the powertrain consists of a three liter twin turbocharged V6 engine. That's made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission. And I believe this is actually the 20th year of Cadillac's V series. So you kind of get a few commemorative badges and accents throughout, which I'll show you. But to the front end here, we do get the LED headlamps, LED signature lights. Love the black mesh grill. And one of those 20th anniversary stickers are right here. And then over here to the wheels, these are 19s. And I'll show you all the specs on them when I go to the window sticker. Where we get passive keyless entry on the front doors. Love the carbon fiber there. Power door lock controls. We have one touch automatic up and down windows on all four doors. Rear window lock here. Power mirror controls are here. Memory seat functions there. And we can also pop the trunk from up here. 15 speaker Bose performance series sound system, which sounds incredible. And then the release for the hood right there. Electronic parking brake, press to engage, hit the brake, press it again to disengage. Power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. And then here's our, I believe that's an 18 way power driver seat with four way power lumbar support. And then we also have manual thigh support right there. But love the accents, love the red seat belts as well. But I have that seat up front adjusted for someone of my size being 6'3 with longer legs. So let's look at this room here. So leg room, not bad. I do have the seat. I feel like I'm not used to having this much room in this car, but <clears throat> just how much space I have between the seat and the steering wheel, I could probably have my legs underneath the steering wheel a little bit just so I can kind of have more of a, a comfortable seating position. But again, decent legroom for this car. Rear AC vents are here, USB-C port there, and then a 12 volt. And I like that we have nice padded seat back pockets on both sides. And then middle seat folds down, bottle holders here. But actually, I, I like how they did the red seat belts on either side and the black one in the middle. Grab handles here, LED reading lights, and then you can hang, you might be able to squeeze a plastic hook on there or two or three metal hanger hooks. And there's a quick look of the sunroof. You get that ultra view sunroof, so two panels there and that's how it looks when those are shut. But going around to the back end, we do get the LED tail lamps as well, LED brake lights, reverse lights. There's a quick close up of the exhaust. But to pop the trunk, just pull here. It's a little button underneath. And pretty good storage size, in my opinion. Hit this, you have battery terminals there. And then you have a nice big side pocket if you don't want stuff to roll around. And then in here, I believe is where you should have your tire inflator kit. You can never tell some of these newer cars if they have the uh, spare tire or not. But pretty much everybody's trying to go to inflator kits. I don't know if it's because it's cheaper or save space or what. But to the fuel filler, you definitely want to make sure you run premium in here. And then to the rear passenger side, I like that we can actually pull the seat from up front here instead of having to pull a latch for the back. And you could fold that flat there and run longer objects that way. And then if you need to put a rear facing car seat, there are your anchors down below.
Now to the front passenger seat, I believe we have the same adjustability as the driver's side, having 18 ways there and that manual thigh support. And then a lockable glove compartment here. And then to the window sticker. Y'all can pause anywhere you need to if you wanted to get a closer look, but I like that price and I like the optional here. I like that we have the sunroof, those 19 inch alloy wheels and that satin graphite finish. So that's what those are if you just really like those wheels on this car. But there's a full view of the window sticker. But again, love that price. I mean, you get the magnetic ride control. Of course, the powertrain's a big plus. It's not a black wing, but you save not having to pay double when you just go with the twin turbo V6. And there's the engine bay there. And I just like how all of that's set up. This looks very menacing. But now let's go ahead and hop in the driver's seat. And before I forget, we do have blind spot monitors here in those side view mirrors. Can't remember if I touched on that or not. But as you can see, yeah, my legs are right underneath the steering wheel, but good space here. It is leather wrap here and we can heat by hitting that button right in there. So we'll get back to this in a moment, but there's the horn. Now to the screen here, I love this screen, especially when the CarPlay is hooked up. We get AM, FM, XM along with Bluetooth. And then again, wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto compatibility. It's great to have. And then we do have dual zone automatic climate control. So we can control it either from the screen here or from the buttons down here below. And then we have three stage heated seats for the driver front passenger. There's our lane keep assist with lane departure, parking sensors, and then that's how we get the hazards on. Wireless charging pad is here. We have several drive modes. So tour, my mode, snow and ice track, then we do have a sport mode. And then all of that kind of shows you how things change as you go through the, the settings there. So pretty neat. And then you also have a V mode. So you hit that button on the steering wheel and then you can actually go in there and edit how you want that to be set up. So if you want the suspension a little stiffer in your V mode, if you want the brake feel to be in kind of a track setting, the steering to be in a track setting, but maybe you don't want the engine and shift points to be that high, you can do that. So pretty neat how that works. And then to our settings here, we can add a phone, pretty easy to do, just walks you right through it. And then you can change your language here all of that there and you have apps and then vehicle settings in here including buckle to drive rear seat reminder etc and there's the backup camera guidelines follow you just turn the steering wheel and then you can turn those guidelines on or off and then auto stop toggle here traction control toggle automatic brake hold and then to shift the 10 speed grab the lever pull down for drive manual tap up for neutral hit the button pull up for reverse press p for park and then we do have a volume knob here. We can go through all of that. We can seek, go through the radio stations, whatever, using these buttons. And then shortcuts. And you can actually use the knob here if you choose, which I actually, I've said this before, I like how this is set up. It's pretty easy, it's nice and big, so you kind of know as you're scrolling, oh, okay, that's what I'm on right now. So I like that. Bottle holders are here, you can stow those. Center console cubby space. We have an SD card reader, USB C, USB A port there, then a 12 volt. And then we're going to get that roof back. The universal home remote's here, and then you can slide or tilt the sunroof. And then your reading lights there, OnStar. But that's what it looks like with the sunshade back. And I like that it goes all the way back one touch. And then you can do the same thing to close it. But back to the steering wheel, blinkers are here. You can toggle your automatic high beams with that button there. Then you have low beams on now, auto, and then you can turn your auto mode on or off by doing that. And then you have rain sense windshield wipers. So one time off, 
auto low high and you can adjust the auto sensitivity right here and then just pull up here for the front wiper fluid we have these nice paddle shifters behind the steering wheel cruise control is activated we do get adaptive cruise on here standard and then the gap adjust for that or the radar cruise is there or the um forward collision alert excuse me is right there mute button here voice recognition volume you can go through your favorites here and then you can use this to go through the middle part of the gauge cluster whether it's through the performance options your standard info music all that you can see so much on here and then when we go to the settings we can change our units from us to metric page options and here you can go ahead and change what's actually shown on the performance meter or performance menu or the vehicle info menu so if you want to see the oil temperature but you don't want to see the friction bubble you can activate that turn things off and same with the vehicle info i don't like having both trips up or i don't need the air filter life and all that because they might tell me at the at the dealership but i want to see my fuel economy you can set that up the way you want so pretty cool and then our push button start is right here and here's the key fob with remote start and now let's take the ct5 v series out on the road for a quick test drive so starting the test drive in the ct5 v here i love the sound that you get from the exhaust Just a great, great sound all in all. And even though it isn't a Blackwing, the V6 does a pretty good job of getting up to speed with ease. And I'm not gonna thrash it, but I'm gonna put it into manual mode. Let's see what it can do. So very quick, and again, this is just with moderate throttle push. Very impressed with the overall power of this thing. And what's great is you also, when you're not putting your foot into it, you're getting 18 miles per gallon in the city, 27 on the highway. EPA estimate, of course, but just fantastic. We have the adaptive cruise on now. And we also have the lane keep assist with lane departure on now. So as you go out of the lines, it'll kind of ping you back in. It's not a lane centering assistant, but pretty good for what it is. And with a vehicle like this, I would just want to have the full control of being able to drive this because it's just, it's so much fun to drive. And again, you're looking at mid fifties as opposed to paying almost a hundred grand for a black wing. Unless you just have money to blow, I just recommend getting this because I feel like you'll have less problems down the road, but also it just, it's more efficient. It's um, probably more comfortable. I haven't driven a CT5 V Blackwing yet. The CT4 V Blackwing wasn't that bad in terms of ride quality, but you pretty much have the same powertrain with that three liter V6 that was twin turbocharged. But this here is just, it's comfortable. It's fast and it looks good. Now, I think a good competitor for this V, the CT5 V, is the Lexus IS 350. I don't even want, I think the 500 having the naturally aspirated V8 is not a true competitor. I mean, you could consider it that way, but I mean, an IS 350 basically similarly equipped with an F Sport package and all of that, around the same price, maybe a little bit cheaper, but that has a naturally aspirated v6 i think it has 311 horsepower this has a bit more but this one just having the twin turbo setup i just think this is a good bargain especially with it being a cadillac now the seats aren't full leather this one doesn't have the ventilated seats in it but i just like the cabin setup more as opposed to the lexus love the screen and also just you know love the steering wheel the dash all of that and then just having the 10 speed automatic to make it even more efficient. But what 
what's crazy is with the twin turbo setup, if you just give it a little bit of throttle, it doesn't, you know, it drives like a, a naturally aspirated V6, but then when you really put your foot down into it, you start to feel those turbos come to life and man, it just, it pushes, it really does. It kind of reminds me how the uh, when the CT6 twin turbo came out, how I don't even want to say revolutionary, but it was just the first time I had been behind something like that. It was just, it was wild. Just behind the wheel of such a smooth riding vehicle and then to be able to push it to its limits like that was just great. And especially giving it some pull, or I should say giving it some throttle in track mode, coming down on an interstate is the best way to really do it as you're going through the shift points just hearing that backfire from the exhaust with those snappy shifts is just super enjoyable and again for it to be in this price point just makes it that much more of a a good choice in my opinion and then adaptive cruise being standard is fantastic having your lane keeping system, blind spot monitors, just a, a good overall buy in my opinion, especially if you want something that's kind of sports car oriented. But this will bring me to the end of my review of this 2024 Cadillac CT5 V-Series.